Okay, still dealing with some crappy weather um, around here. So uh, I'm taking the time to tidy up some last minute little stuff that needs to get done. Um, like the fuel discriminator. I mounted it here. Well, let me tell you what this does first. So this is basically a, a rollover valve and it connects to the vent on the fuel cell. What the vent does is it releases the displaced air inside the fuel cell. As you fill it up with fuel really fast, the air has to escape and it comes out the vent. Inside these fuel cells, there's a little ball check valve on the other side of this that in the event of a rollover, the check valve plugs this off and prevents fuel from spilling out and causing a fire hazard and environmental hazards and so forth. The problem that inspectors have during tech inspection is they don't know, can't see whether or not these are taken out or not. A lot of guys uh, take them out because they feel it restricts airflow, which it doesn't, but they take them out anyway. So inspectors are reluctant to pass you a tech unless you have an external one that they can see. And that's where this comes in. This is called a fuel discriminator. It allows the air to escape and vapors to escape. But in the event of a rollover, these little ping pong balls plug this off. So this needs to hook to that. And then this goes to another hose that has to loop around the tank. A lot of guys will run it and loop like a really big loop in the truck. And what that does is if we flip over onto our side, this isn't going to work effectively because it's not all the way upside down. So when you're on your side, the loop is the other part of the rollover system to where if you're on your side, the fuel goes through, but it can't make it back up the loop because the loop, instead of being like this, is now like this. So if you're on your side, the fuel will roll out and then it can't go up the other, it can't fight gravity basically and flow out. So um, it'll probably make more sense when I get it put on there, but uh, I've been told a couple times at tech inspection that I need to get an external one. So finally got one because they're kind of hard to get. And now I'm just de debating on where to put it. I put it here because I didn't want to have to tear the whole fuel cell apart to redo this and mount it right here. A lot of guys will just mount them right here. So I'm contemplating on whether I want to do that, but I don't know that I have enough room here for this this big thing. I was doing measurements and I don't think I'm going to have the room, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is take this apart anyway and replace this. This is a, a number eight AN fitting. I'm going to replace it with a number 12, which is a bigger orifice to let more air out faster so we can fuel the truck quicker. And then I'm going to put a 90 right here and run a hose over to here. And then this will go to the loop. Um, yeah, I was hoping to mount it on the tank because it's cleaner. It'll be more protected. I don't really like it here. It seems to me exposed, but I think it'll be all right. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to get the tower pulled off, get the hose taken out, undo all these. I'm a little nervous about doing this because I've never tore into a fuel cell like this, um, but it should be pretty straightforward. There is a bladder inside here. This is an RCI fuel cell. And this metal box that you see is just a, the first level of protection. Um, but inside is a really heavy duty plastic wire embedded kind of like this uh, liner uh, bladder. And uh, it, it's just the next level of protection in case, you know, we get in a bad crash and the cage rolls in on itself and that big red box gets smashed. Um, the bladder just conforms to the smash and 
if it doesn't get punctured, uh, then you don't have fuel leak. And then inside the bladder is a bunch of foam that prevents the slosh of the fuel. So it's pretty elaborate system inside those fuel safes. Um, so I've never tore one apart, so I'm a little, little nervous about doing it, but I, I think it'll be all right. So yeah, I think, again, I don't think I have enough room to put it here, to mount it straight onto here. There's just not enough room with these bolts and the fittings. So what I'm probably going to do is just take this out and replace it with the bigger 12 and then just plumb it with hose and it'll just have to be that way. So that's where I'm at. I was going through my Ian fittings and hose. See what I got. This is the, this is the hose that makes the loop around the fuel cell. Um, do it clear so you can see if you have fuel uh, leaking of any kind uh, or, um, you know, yeah. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm just kind of like brainstorming it. All right, that's what we'll do. discriminator I knew that I would have to take all this stuff apart I was hoping to um, switch it over to a dry brake setup um, at the same time but I haven't gotten any uh, still been super sucking. We've had a couple of days of nice sunshine. But now there's another front coming in. These are the fuel lines. This is the return, and that's the pickup. This one should be attached to a long siphon tube that goes to the bottom of the fuel cell. And this one's the fuel injection return.
Okay. This is where I get a little nervous. Everything gets so gunky. Okay, now I gotta take these washers off. break these. I think that's what I think that's what Probably should have ordered a new gasket. But Why is this different size? That's a different size.
I didn't hurt the I didn't hurt the gasket, so that's good. So let me show you. Here's the vent right here. Let me, let me, here, let me, let me try to prop it up here. Okay. Let me see. So here's the vent. And then here's the, the ball valve. If you can see it right there. Yeah. And then this. This is a, a little clapper for the fill. That way you don't have fuel spilling out your fill tube. This closes it all. So I'm gonna replace this guy. I'm gonna clean it up. My fuel smells okay. All right, let me put something over over that to keep shit from falling in there. All right. Okay. All right. Kind of scary. So there's the ball valve. You can see a little ball in there. If you can see it. Now I would leave this in there as another level of protection, but it's so small. This is a number eight. And I want to increase it to a 12. So it can flow more. Let more air escape. We can fill the tank faster. So I have this one here that I'm gonna install. And then I'll put a 90 on it, this. And then the hose will hook to this. But I think I'm gonna have to trim that out, yeah. See if I have room. There might, there might be room for that. Let me check. Okay, so what I did is uh, drilled this out, and I chamfered it a little bit so the O-ring can seat in there. We'll get a good seal on there. Now, may yeah, I need to put a Teflon washer on there, so I'm gonna steal one. Uh, steal one off of this guy.
Okay. There it is. A lot bigger hole. I think what I might do is this is low enough. I might I might mount it like that. I might do that. I like it better here with the rest of the fuel stuff than hanging out way over there by the wheel. It's just not really a good place to put it, and it has to be above the tank, you know. Otherwise, it's ineffective. <sighs> we'll see how it works. I might, um, put you guys here. I might put it <clears throat> like that coupler here and then I can use the bracket that it came with and build a tower that bolts onto here with these bolts it gives it some stability yeah it's just an awkward awkward thing <clears throat> so this can go back together now I think <clears throat> yeah. There's a little hole in the foam down there. There it goes. Oh man. This is a little nerve wracking here. What I'm nervous about right now is all of these, all of these are connected to a giant ring and the ring is just sandwiching the bladder and the tank shell and this all together. And the only thing that's holding that whole ring against gravity falling into the tank is just the rubber of the bladder and stuff. So I was worried of pushing this back on of dislodging the whole thing. And, having it fall inside, which would really, really suck, but it worked. Yeah, I've, all my race cars, I've, I've had a lot of fuel cells. I've never even attempted to do this. It's just something that for some reason freaked me out, but kind of easy now that I did it. Never know until you try. Oh, <laughs> 
Looks all right. Okay. Before I put the tower back in, I'm gonna go ahead and see about putting that like that. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, this is what I did. Got that changed out. Little piece of tubing here to connect it. They'll put a hose clamp here. And then it's going to live right there. I'm going to build a, <clears throat> a brace that will go down and bolt to these two bolts. And then come up <clears throat> and give it some rigidity. A little support. And then the hose will come off of this. i got to figure out a 90 right here so it doesn't come too far up. It will come off and then I'll put the loop in. Yeah, that's where it's at. Got a little delayed. I had a customer job to do real fast. Didn't take very long. So, uh, yeah, we'll get back on. I'm going to clean the shop up a little bit because it's a freaking mess again. And then I'll get back on it. Okay, to totally screwed up and forgot to get this on camera. But um, I'm already done. I'm not going to take it all apart just to reassemble it. But I'll show you what I did. Um, we already changed this fitting to a larger, larger diameter. It's a 12. And then I made this little bracket that just mounts onto one of these uh, bolts here just to give it some rigidity. And then uh, I have a 90 that's going to come off of here and then go to the loop. But that's pretty much what I did. I just used the bracket that came with the, with the um, discriminator and then just made this little aluminum angle. And um, it's pretty stout. So probably would have been okay just leaving it freestanding, but it had quite a bit of wobble and I don't want the vibration to wiggle it off or anything. So just uh, reinforce it a little bit. So that's where I'm at. Um, I got the, the 90, I painted it and uh, I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll get it uh, put on and put the loop in and that I will film, I promise. <clears throat>
Yeah, really. Yeah. So I think I think there's something in the steering because it looked like it just put the turn over. I think he thought he got a, a right front flat. But if we're looking at it, it looks like the right side is towed in a little bit. I think when he ran it on the brakes, he probably could have twisted a, a second shaft. He could have done something. It's a wrap. Well, it looks like he might have a little bit of an issue of the qualifying, and he just took the banana peel right off.
All right, there it is. That's the loop and the discriminator. Now I'm just gonna put um, a vent on the end of it. It's just one of these little things. Helps to keep dirt and shit out of it. Cause as the as the fluid sloshes around in there, well it shouldn't slosh too much because of the foam, but it does. It's gonna suck air in and out a little bit. So you don't want dust getting sucked in there. So, all right. I'll get that figured out. Okay, that's the installation of a fuel discriminator and a rollover loop. So, that's it. If you, uh, like I said, if you wanna do off-road racing, you gotta have one of these. So it's one of those, one of those things. So, all right, I'll get this buttoned up and uh, yeah, start getting her back together and get ready to test. The weather's clearing up. It still rained last night on us again. And now it's like 65 and overcast, so, and really humid. So, um, that's it. All right.